want you to take a look at this behind me. This is test stand 46. 70. This is a site that's rich in space history thanks to its role in testing the motors that powered the Saturn V rockets that launched Apollo astronauts to the moon and later was used for the space shuttle as well. Today, this site is being refurbished and leased by Jeff Bezos Blue Origin, really speaking to the role that commercial space is playing in this new aerospace age here in Huntsville. Now, once super secretive, Blue Origin has been steadfastly and increasingly uh, getting more public about its plans. It has a number of major initiatives underway, everything from the forthcoming New Shepard space tourism business to development of its orbital New Glenn rocket, which is competing for both commercial and government missions. Also, it's Blue Moon spacecraft, which the company is pitching to NASA as part of a lunar lander bid that also includes Lockheed Martin, Northrop Grumman, and Draper. But it's really another business that represents one of the first significant revenue streams for the company. It's the reusable engines that are going to make all of those plans possible. Blue Origin is building them for its own rockets, but it's also producing them for United Launch Alliance, which is the joint venture between Lockheed Martin and Boeing, which is also developing its own rocket about 30 miles from here in Decatur, Alabama, its new Vulcan rocket. Blue Origin is building a $200 million rocket engine factory here in Huntsville. It's expected to open early next year. I sat down exclusively with CEO Bob Smith to discuss that investment and how it fits into the broader strategy at Blue Origin. Take a listen. Huntsville is known as the Rocket City, and it's deservingly so. I mean, that's where the, much of the U.S. rocket capability actually came from. If you go back to the 50s and 60s, that's where it all started. And so it has this great receptacle of talent there that you can tap into, and it's been decades in building. So we wanted to go to where the talent is and where actually you get great support from the government. So everything from Governor Ivey to Senator Shelby all the way down to Mayor of Battle in Huntsville have been great supporters of actually developing the space economy there. I think Huntsville is is key to where we're going to be in terms of our engine development. So actually how we actually go produce our engines and test our engines, that's going to be key to where we have. We're going to put three over 300 people in that new facility. We spent $200 million on it. It's going to be 350,000 square feet. It's a massive capability that's really going to anchor us into that community, which is going to be really powerful for decades to come. Have you been able to uh, tap into the labor pool there? I guess, what is it, in addition to the fact that it is Rocket City, it has this history there, what is it about the area that makes it so special? Well, the, the people down there are absolutely well-schooled in this entire area. So you don't have to do a lot of training from the standpoint of what is a rocket engine and do you have to have this precision detail that we have to have to actually make rocket engines. So there's a certain intuitive sense that's there in the employment base itself. And furthermore, you then actually attract these people that all want to go do what we want to go do, which is you want to go back to the moon. You want to go build their rockets. And so it's, it's really easy to attract great talent there because everybody has this passion that we share. When do you get to 40 engines a year? We're going to be there in actually when we actually are at rate and flying. So we're in 22 and 23, we're going to be producing in that rate. We actually opened the factory here just this coming first quarter. And so we'll actually have a big ribbon cutting down there and uh, have, of course, everything that we need to actually start producing engines there. Is the U.S. doing enough to secure space? I think that space control, space exploration, space commercialization um, has all been something that we're starting to talk about more today. I think we're getting a much better understanding of how important space is every day, whether it's GPS that's guiding your Uber or what you're doing from a credit card processing from trades on the stock market that are actually timed using um, space assets. All of those are integral to our economy. And so if we're not conscious about what that commercialization of space means to our economy every day, to everybody in the United States as well in the world, as well as what we need to go to protect those assets in now what is a contested environment, now that we have near peers that are actually threatening those space assets, it becomes even more important that we have a robust set of launch vehicles. Lastly, Long-term vision for Blue Origin, five years, 10 years, yeah. 20 years, where do you expect the company to be? Well, I, I think the thing to first ground everybody on is what we're doing today, which is pretty ambitious and terrific. I mean, we're going to be flying people in space on a suborbital tourism vehicle on New Shepard. We're going to be building a very, very large New Glenn vehicle that is going to really shake up, I think, the market in terms of its overall capabilities. We have our own engine production and what we were just talking about in Huntsville, this large modern facility there. And we're going to the moon. 
that's going to keep us busy. I mean, that's going to keep us busy quite a bit. And as we actually go develop all these capabilities, we'll become a more self-sustaining business, which is also part of where we need to be. So, so yes, so that's where I think we're going to be. Just a reminder that two years ago, Jeff Bezos disclosed that he sells about a billion dollars worth of Amazon stock a year to fund Blue Origin. Uh, but certainly with all of these different initiatives afoot, you can see that the company is moving towards these uh, more sustainable business models, if you will, uh, over the coming years with all of these different projects. And we have more on my discussion with Bob Smith online at CNBC.com as well as our deep dive into Huntsville, guys. One of the other things we did talk about was that new Shepard suborbital uh, vehicle. It's going to be their space tourism service. Uh, Smith telling me that it is on pace. They're planning to uh, start sending humans up uh, in that system and, and hopefully launch service, get it operational next year. Ticket prices going to be in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. The reason I bring it up you got Virgin Galactic publicly traded now, and these two are the most comparable companies, most comparable services to each other, so certainly being watched very closely. I was going to say, Morgan, I mean, for uh, those who are <laughs> looking for ways to invest in the space, is this mostly about yeah. space tourism or uh, commercial freight um, or, or something else that we're not thinking of? Oh, I think space tourism is 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 piece one of it, right? So whether you're talking about, say, Virgin Galactic, space tourism is sort of the first stage. They're longer term thinking about faster transportation around the globe as well, point to point transportation with hypersonics. Um, in, in the case of Blue Origin, I think if you look at each one of the projects or businesses that the company is developing right now, all of it speaks to this broader vision around human space flight uh, and longer term, as Bezos has outlined it, building out the infrastructure, bringing down the cost of launch and building out the infrastructure to go to space and ultimately have humanity colonize space.